Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to show off the six generations of fire alarm devices that I have from System Sensor, so let's go ahead and get started. So System Sensor is a manufacturer of fire alarm devices. I think that's pretty widely known. Um, they make things from smoke detectors to beam detectors to duct detector accessories and things like that, and also notification appliances. I think one of their best product lines, or one of the most popular, was their horn strobes that had the plug-in style base. And what I mean by that is you would mount something like this to the wall, and then you just plug the notification appliance into that. Made installation really simple, and uh, as a result, these system sensor devices, especially the modern ones, they became really, really popular. I mean, these things pop up pretty much everywhere. Obviously, there's a lot of other brands of devices, but system sensor is definitely one of the notable ones. Obviously, there's probably more nitty-gritty little generations. Like, for example, you could pick out differences. Like, um, at one point, the mass had a thinner font. Um, some of the classics had a little generation where they had screw mounts for the brackets. And there's, I guess, a bunch of different things you could say. But um, these are kind of just the major revisions of each system sensor device. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one. This right here is a system sensor mass or MA-SS. The reason I'm calling it an MA-SS is because even though people call it a mass, it's actually a separate strobe and horn. If you look at it, this part right here, or the actual strobe part that screws into the top, the model of this is SS-24. And then on the back, this sounder part is the MA part. So you can buy those parts separately. You can see that even though it is attached with these little nuts here, the um, strobe kind of just clamps into these terminals like that. So you can actually separate this. But this right here is one of the original devices from System Sensor. Features this frosted strobe and then this classic sounder. It's multi-tone, so if you slide this cover, or actually it's on this side of the cover, they have these tabs. Um, the older masses, which is this one right here with the frosted strobe, to select the tone, you would have to break these so it would be completely permanent. You would have to get some pliers and then pull it off, um, and that was a little bit unfortunate. But nevertheless, let's hear what this one sounds like. It's pretty common to find these units on these trim plates, which makes them look a lot more flush with the wall. These also came in speaker strobe versions, so you would see versions where there's a speaker behind the strobe. Here's a ceiling mount speaker strobe. You can see it has this mass strobe. Also, some of them have this um, thinner fire lettering, but... That's this older mass series. Also something that I guess could be considered part of the mass series is this PA400 series mini horn with the strobe attachment. What these are is a little kit that you would do and you would just put this onto the top. It just plugs into the base here and this is a mini horn strobe, but looks kind of like a mass. Moving on, we have the ADA mass. I'm considering this the second generation. It's very similar to what you just saw. It sounds pretty much the same, except there's some major revisions to it. Starting with the front, the strobe is completely different. You can see here, this is an ADA strobe. This was introduced in 1993 to comply with the new ADA standards. Um, so this strobe is much more intense than the other one, which is just a frosted strobe. This one does not sync. So this strobe does not have the capability to sync with the modern fire alarm devices. Um, again, though, if you look beyond the strobe, the horn is pretty much the same. This is still the MA sounder, but something interesting about the sounder is now these are actually officially multi-tone where you can select the uh, tone without breaking the tabs. So these ones have these little metal clips. Um, so that's how you select the tone. Now you just move these clips around. You don't have to break anything and nothing's permanent. Also, this is officially one horn strobe. So this is not a separable unit. You can see here, it says MASS 2488. So it's a complete unit. The strobe comes through right there, so you really can't pull this whole thing apart. Um, so now this is an officially one horn strobe. Obviously I can change the tone on this one, but here's a tone on this unit. Moving on to the 90s, we have the third generation, which is the Spectre Alert series of fire alarm devices. These things right here were really popular. I think the thing that made them really popular was the fact that they were so easy to install and they were just very user friendly. I mean, obviously a lot of the older devices, like the previous generations, they had this huge back. So you need a massive back box. They could only mount on a four by four box. And these new devices were really light. These things are light. They're flat on the back. They can go flush against anything. Um, in a lot of cases, lazy technicians, um, for low voltage, they would just punch holes in the wall and not even use a box. And um, these would work perfectly fine for that because the back, again, is flush with the wall. These things, 
are four wire so they come with these jumpers they have two different tones you can have them playing uh the electromechanical tone or the little chatter tone i'm not really sure what it's called later they released these in multi candela um which is really crazy because selectable output wasn't really all that popular at the time you can just kind of imagine the appeal of selectable output devices to contractors and technicians who are installing these units. Back in the day, before you could get selectable output devices, you'd have to do all the calculations for volume and candela output because those things aren't just randomly selected. Um, different devices are chosen for different spaces to meet certain output levels. Um, but you would have to order the exact amount of each device that was specified. So for example, you'd have to get like 10 75 candela models, 20 15 candela models, and it was just really annoying because you couldn't exchange models. Um, these units right here, when they started introducing the selectable stuff, it was really nice because you could just order one thing um, and just use it everywhere. And obviously these mount to more back box configurations. Um, 4x4 was the standard, but now these things can go single gang and double gang. And that's really something that was nice. So these things were pretty popular. Here's what this unit sounds like on the most popular configuration. There were a lot of different options for this device. You could get it in a single gang version like this for the footprint mount. There were speaker strobe variants of this, ceiling mount variants, you could get this in white. It was a really versatile device. When the Spectral Alert Classic series was discontinued in 2007, this right here was the successor. This is also a Spectral Alert device, it's called the Spectral Alert Advance, and it became probably the most popular fire alarm device of all time. These things were basically the Spectral Alert Classic, took all the features of it, which is the selectable output, the mounting options, the fact that it's really light and easy to install, and they just made it better. A lot of people hate these, especially in the fire alarm community, because they think that these things are ugly or whatever, but undeniably, they're a really good device, and the engineering behind it is really good. They use this plug-in style mounting base, which is really new in the industry at the time, um, but it was really revolutionary for people who install these things, because back in the day, you'd have to hold the device and then have a screwdriver and put the wires in the device. And it was really annoying, especially if you were up on a really high ladder doing this. With these new devices, you just take the bracket right here, fix this thing to the wall. You could do your wiring, install it like that. Um, and then what you do, once you do the wiring, just plug this thing right onto the base and it's receiving power and it's good. And that was just really, really nice. Um, again, this mounts on many different boxes, single gang, um, 4x4. This one also does octagon now. And these also sync. Um, they sync with the System Sensor Classic devices. What System Sensor does really well is all of their stuff is backwards compatible. So the Classic will still sync with all the new L series stuff, which I'll get to in a second. Something that's nice about these brackets is that they fit on all of the advanced series of devices. So this right here is a ceiling mount horn strobe, and it fits on the same bracket. Fun fact the internals of these ceiling mount devices are exactly the same as the wall mount devices. It's just the housing that's different. So these units are also ceiling mount um, allowed. They're UL listed for both wall and ceiling mount installations. Obviously some AHJs will complain about the fire lettering, but since the strobe is omnidirectional, it's technically cleared for that. This is what the advanced sounds like on its normal configuration. Options were really endless with these things. These came in two wire and four wire, white, red, you know, standard speaker strobe, non-speaker strobe, low frequency sounder. I believe this is the first series of system sensor devices to offer the low frequency option. They also had this in a mini horn, MHW, chime strobe, weatherproof. I mean, these things had all the options. There was a time period in my area where every single new installation I saw use system sensor devices. And I think the ease of installation was a big factor in why these were chosen a lot. In 2017, System Sensor announced that they'd be dropping all of the advanced series devices with the exception of the weatherproof and low frequency devices in favor of this, which is the System Sensor L series. L series was effectively just a modernized version of the advanced. It's pretty much exactly the same with the exception of the fact that it's lower power draw, which is why it's called the L series. Um, but you can see it has the same overall design where you have the curved sides, it says fire on it. This is the bracket, it's a plug-in style bracket. So again, you would just wire this and then put the device on there. 
for a period of time, the initial mounting brackets that they made these with was way too weak, so they had to redesign it to be more rigid, but now it's pretty decent. Selectable tone, selectable output, all the things that you'd expect from a good old plug-in device. Here's what this device sounds like on its normal configuration. As you can see, it uses the exact same audio file as the Advanced series, but the horn is definitely less loud and less shrill. You can definitely tell when an L series is sounding as opposed to an Advanced because your ears don't hurt as much. But um, overall, it's pretty much the same device, maybe a little bit improved. Again, you get all the options that the Advanced series gave you. You can get ceiling mount devices, speaker strobes, low frequency sounders, ceiling low frequency sounders, you name it. Recently, System Sensor introduced the LED L series and phased out the Xenon devices. Um, in the fire alarm industry recently, there's been pretty much wide acceptance of LED fire alarm devices. I mean, these things have kind of taken over. These things are really nice though, because the LED strobe saves a lot of power. Um, obviously the main point is not to save electricity for like an energy bill, because most of the time these things are activated. But the fact that you can get more, you know, devices on a circuit means you have to have less power, or you don't have to have as many power supplies, thinner wire, overall cost savings. These things are pretty much the same as the L-Series except for the strobe, um, with the exception of the fact they added a test port for probing at the top, which is kind of nice. They even use the same mounting bracket um, against selectable output. Really nice devices. A lot of people don't like them because they think these are ugly or whatever, but again, they look really, really similar. Not that much different. I guess there's an argument to me to be made. They do look a little bit sharper on the sides, but I think it's fine. Um, the strobe is now omnidirectional again, so the L-Series was not able to be mounted on the ceiling. These are, and I guess they're pretty cool. This is what these sound like on the normal configuration. And there you go. These were also released with the newer LED series of weatherproof devices, which is the P2GRK or something like that. The advanced series was actually the only weatherproof device system sensor was offering up until these were released. So um, now there's finally a new device, but yeah, these are the L series. These things currently come in speaker strobe, white, red, pretty much all the configurations. I'm not sure if there's a low frequency sounder yet since these are fairly new, but um, it looks like system sensor is trying to phase out these Xenon devices. What's cool about these devices that you're seeing on the screen right now is that they're still all compatible with each other. Even though there's like a 30 year age gap, because this is from 1997, this is what they're making in 2025, almost 30 years. Um, they're all still compatible. Like you could put these all on a system and they'd all sync with each other. Still uses the exact same sync protocol. And that's really good backwards compatibility because obviously if you need to swap out one of these devices, you can put a newer device on the system, would still sync, no problems there. Um, that's actually a way that shady companies will actually try to swindle their customers because in a lot of cases, the systems that these things are connected to getting old. So when they replace the fire panel, they're like, oh, we need to install new signaling devices because those aren't compatible. Um, but yes, they are. They're totally compatible. If anything, it's actually a disservice because when you pull these things out and then you put something like this up, it leaves like a footprint and it just looks kind of weird. But these are all compatible. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. I know this was a very talky video, but I hope you enjoyed learning about the history of these fire alarm devices. So yeah, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.